All right, here we are in Carson National Forest near Taos, New Mexico. I'm sitting here with Bodhi. We're at the Rainbow Gathering. Some said it's like the highest elevation we've had in the United States before. So what's up, Bodhi? Uh, really enjoying the gathering. I, I got here a few days ago and uh, this is my third national gathering. I think my sixth gathering in general. I've been to a few regionals. So what draws you to the rainbow? Because you've come more than once. Um, well, I think the, um, the variety of like-minded people and um, the, the freedom of this place where there's, there's no rules. It's, um, you know, completely egalitarian, uh, uh, kind of anarchist. Um, and everything's provided for freely. Um, uh, and yeah, I just love all of it, the all-inclusiveness. Sure. Nature. So do you normally go with a group when you go to these things or by yourself? Uh, yeah, I, I've kind of always traveled with a group. Um, uh, I, I haven't really had much experience traveling solo, um, uh, but I, yeah, I really love like sharing experiences. Uh, it's really nice. Awesome. So, uh, do you remember the first time you ever heard about the Rainbow Gathering? Um, I don't remember the first time. I know I knew about it before I left home when I was like 16 or something is probably when I heard about it. Cool. Uh, uh, cause I was always interested in like communes and, um, you know, freedom. Counterculture. Yeah. Counterculture. Awesome. Well, that's what I'm interested in as well. So big counterculture location that is very popular, especially on the YouTubes is uh, Slab City. Yeah. You know about that place? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I've been there. Tell me about it. Um, well, uh, so I, I came from Colorado and um, I was on my way to Paradise, California. And um, I found out it was date season, the, you know, the date palms, the, the, the fruit. Um, so there were dates falling from the trees at that time. Oh my gosh. Um, it was about October 2019. And so drove all the way to Southern California for dates, had this big burlap sack we were going to fill up. And um, yeah, collected a bunch of dates. And then uh, we were in the area of Slap City. And so we decided to go there. And um, who, who were you with? Uh, I was I was with uh, two friends um, that I that I'd met uh, not too long after I first got on the road, um, and yeah, so we went to Slap City. The first place we seen was this place called the Camp of Enlightenment or the Church of Enlightenment. I remember that spot. Yeah, yeah. Up towards the canal. Yeah, and so there's were they people. welcoming? I never went in. Uh, he was very welcoming. Yeah, um, it, it was this one older man, and I think his daughter lived there as well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he invited us for dinner. We had dinner with him, kind cool. of like potluck. Um, and then, uh, uh, around sundown, um, we, we start driving away. We we're going to find somewhere to sleep that night. And then we drove into a ditch. What? Yep. Uh, right on the main road, like right near, um, Salvation Mountain. Yeah, no way. Drove into a ditch. Um, and couldn't get ourselves out and so we we're, were trying to wave everyone down and no one would pull over and finally <laughs> someone pulls over and they're like yeah I'll, I'll, I'll get you a tow truck um, yeah they have like a local tow guy yeah and so the local tow guy comes and um, he's like oh yeah okay yeah just chain you up and uh, but gas doesn't come free that'll be 60 bucks and we're like well dude we don't have any money so um, you know, we could just wait for someone else. And then he gets all angry and he's like, are you saying I'm not generous? And he, he, he storms away and drives away. Um, and, uh, so now we're still in that ditch. Hell, man. And, uh, about ten minutes later, this van drives up, um, and it's this dready rainbow feller. And, um, uh, he offers to help us out, pulls us out. Um, and his van wasn't legal, so he asked us to drive to the store. And so we drove to the store, oh, and uh, so I'll rewind a little bit. The day before we went into Slab City, we got a flat tire driving across the border to California um, and then put the donut on. And so driving to the store for him, on the way back, we got another flat tire separate from the donut. Um, and so, you know, we were kind of stuck there at that point. Um, you know, didn't really 
couldn't really just drive out. What a vulnerable place to be stuck, right in Slab City, too. Yeah, right on the main road of Slab City, and he was telling us, you know, that there are bandits out here, someone might just come and take your engine. Um, and so he took us back to his camp, um, and uh, slept on his couch. Um, and yeah, didn't have much food or anything. I think I mostly just lived off of like dates and tomatoes I found in the dumpster. Um, what, an island? What's that? An island or where? Which dumpster? Oh, uh, probably like the 99 cent food store. That's I remember it. going to those oh, a lot. Oh, the town just place. south, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, mostly just dates. I, I thought I'd never eat another date again. Um, Did you make it to the handlebar? the handlebar yeah by the skate park uh maybe i remember there's like a party going on some night at some place it might have been the skate park um but like i didn't really f feel like i fit in all that much i went to like east jesus east jesus was cool For and sure there's this place that had kittens um i think it was yeah yeah this place that had kittens um, and yeah, I met some really cool people there. There's like this permaculture cat. He lived in like this big, uh, I think what used to be a sewer or water catchment or something, but it was like this big, uh, concrete thing. And then you climb into his house by going like into the sewer no way. and it was just pitch black and it was wow. nice and cool in there in the hundred degree weather. That's crazy. Um, and, uh, yeah, so spent like four days there. Um, those four days weren't all that eventful that I could remember. Um, you know, just getting to know people and, um, uh, but I remember my last night there being pretty event eventful. Um, there was some conflict going on between, uh, what I was told was the cartels, um, and, you know, the people of Slab City. And, uh, uh, yeah, they're kind of like preparing for the conflict and um yeah so there ended there ended up being a fight breaking out like right right where i was sleeping oh my gosh and uh and uh someone pulls out a taser and it's just crazy oh my gosh um and then wow. the next morning the librarian was kind enough to give us a ride to uh, the nearest town was and, that cornelius um he's he's kind of shorter he's a marine no, I don't think. Cornelius is really cool. Uh, okay. they, have, they have a YouTube channel as well, Cornelius Van Gogh. Oh, cool. nice. uh, they run the library. They took a step back uh, to get some space for themselves this year. Uh, but, yeah, they pretty much have been there for the library. There must have been another person there. Yeah. The library is cool as fuck. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, so, yeah, got a ride into town, got some new tires, and uh, uh, I think we were on our way as soon as possible. Um because uh, th there were definitely some things that I liked about the place. Um, I liked the freedom and, um, you know, uh, a lot of the same things that I like about Rainbow, um, that it's all inclusive, that, you know, there are no rules, um, and, uh, you know, it's just pretty much run by morals and it's completely egalitarian. Um, uh, but also, yeah, it just didn't feel like I fit in too much. Um, it was kind of like a rougher scene. Um, it's a little more the dirty kid scene, and you're a little more towards the, the hippie side. Yeah, right? yeah. And I'm not trying to put labels. I hate labels. But as far as, like, you know, you identify more, like, spiritually and trying to learn down that route. Yeah. And the dirty kids, not that they're just dirty, but that's just more of, like, the, like, fuck the establishment, mm -hmm. you know, anti-government. And, like, that's not me talking shit on anyone. Yeah, thing, yeah. But, but yeah, I feel like you're you're a little more towards the one angle with a little bit of the anti-establishment. Yeah, yeah, it totally leaned more towards um, uh, like the dirty kid side, but also also very different. Like you know, there were a lot of hermits there, um, and and I did meet lots of really kind, uh, lovable people. Um, yeah, it surprised me. I loved Slap City. Yeah, a lot of people that just really made me feel like family. Honestly. Yeah, there there are a lot of things and a lot of people um, uh, that I really loved. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I did. I did enjoy my time there. Certainly, that's so cool. Uh, so, how did like your expectations live up to your first impressions? Live up to your like 
final like view of, of Slab City? Was there any yeah. like transformation through that, or was it all pretty much what you thought? Uh, that's a good question. It wasn't what I thought it was. So um, your expectations when you got there, the first impression didn't really, or. Or what did it seem like when you first got there? What did you think about the place? Um, well, when I first got there, I went to East Jesus and, like, you know, that really artsy spot with all the TVs and the... Yeah, the, the, the TV wall is the best. Yeah, yeah, all the art. Um, and that was really cool, and I met some really cool folks there. Um, and uh, So what had your expectations been then? It sounds like you had a good first impression. My, my expectations, I guess, was um, something like... I don't know if if you've ever been to uh, Asheville or um, Love Asheville, uh, like Eugene or Williams or Ashland or Asheville. Uh, both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're both. Yeah, cool. Yeah, both. Like it's easy to switch because they're so similar. Traveler hippie hot spots. Hipster um, town. Yeah. Lots of breweries and stuff. Yeah. So I I, I kind of imagine it a, as something like that, um, to where it's just like you know a bunch of travelers of all different kinds there um but there wasn't quite as much variety as i expected in the the, the travelers and um the people that i that i met there um n not to talk down upon it like i said i've met lots of wonderful people there yeah um but yeah it didn't it didn't quite like fulfill my expectations um it was interesting like really getting to know the place and then also seeing like um tourists come there every day yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it was kind of like you know a wild uh difference in juxtaposition to each other yeah, yeah yeah see all those tourists have to do is just grab those dirty clothes off the ground and they'll fit right in <laughs> yeah throw them on honestly if you're watching them it's just grab the clothes off the ground you'll be much more accepted that way <laughs> yeah um so yeah uh but nevertheless, I had a good time. Um, and would I do it again? I'm not sure. Uh, not not for four days. Yeah. <laughs> I did almost, I think I did like six weeks. Yeah. Maybe maybe I would have to just like plug into a different spot um, and like... I think you'd you like know, the handlebar. Yeah. The handlebar was really cool. It was such a mix and it was a safe space and it was mm. like, I really liked it. They made me feel special and there's like... I'm very different from a lot of people too there and I don't always feel accepted and it was it was cool because I'm not like them exactly mm -hmm. but no one's like each other yeah uh, they made me feel really good there mm -hmm. and like I still felt out of place like I always do but honestly I don't know if I'd really want to fit in yeah yeah I like secretly feel like I might want to but I don't think I think I'd be dissatisfied mm -hmm. I just feel like the rest of the pack yeah uh so the rainbow what are your plans for future rainbow gatherings do you, uh what do you, do you mean like, do you have any like are you gonna go to another one soon are you gonna go back to like are you traveling what are you doing right now yeah yeah where are you going where have you been backpack. um no wait i'm gonna head to the idaho gathering tonight wow um, from new mexico Hopefully make it there by tomorrow. It's at like 17, 18 hours. I just did yeah. the reverse drive. Oh, nice. Uh, you can go up through Salt Lake City like we did. I think mm. the fastest way is through Denver. Okay. But uh, Google Maps, luckily we don't have yeah. to think about that shit anymore. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Idaho, I'm really hoping to make it to the Mexico gathering Dude, this winter. There's so many hot springs. It's the highest concentration of hot springs in the world in Idaho. Oh, wow. So if you just take wow. a look, yeah. You nice. Can go, go be naked with strangers. Yeah, I went to one of them not too far from Riggins uh, last year, um, and then I, I've been to like one or two in Oregon, which is, which are really nice. Some of them can be awfully Mormony though, so you know. Oh yeah. Just keep your shorts to the side, just in case people get all weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Um. So yeah, and then I remember last year there was a Washington regional, so I'm hoping that's happening pretty cool. soon. Cool. Yeah, I'd like to go to Washington to explore myself this year. Mm -hmm. Hey, we'll probably be on similar parallel paths, so we'll have to, like, connect again. Yeah. Uh, do you have any other things you might want to share? Like, any maybe tips for people who might be scared to go out and travel on their own or jump mm -hmm. with a group of people? People who might just be, like, afraid to, like, let go of the security of, like, using money or mm -hmm. whatever. Any, any tips for people? Yeah, yeah that's a good question. Uh, well, my number one tip, um, it may not be all that helpful, but... Uh, take the leap of faith um you know there you might always feel nervous about it there might always be some fear behind it um uh so 
you know, you can't just wait for the perfect time when uh, everything's set up. You just have to really go for it. Um, don't don't wait too long. Um, and uh, yeah, there's so many different ways you can like get started on that path and ease your way into it. Um, I would look into uh, like intentional communities or like maybe go woof somewhere. Um, that's how I got started woofing and in intentional communities. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, that that brought me to Rainbow and um, all kinds of things. Uh, music festivals might be a good way. Um, yeah, yeah. Awesome. There are lots of ways, and um, and yeah, there are like so many different tricks. Like living without money in America is is extremely easy, and um, honestly, I've lived a lot more abundantly without money than I have with money. Um, I've experienced a lot more abundance eating out of dumpsters and uh, you know uh, gas jugging and stuff like that, um, and. And yeah, just like pretty much living by faith, faith that you'll always be provided for, like no matter where you are, no matter what you have, who you are. Um, that's that's you know taken me pretty far. That's amazing, yeah. Well, uh, there's gonna be an overflow of, of really positive comments, but we're gonna get some mm. naysayers because it's the internet and these yeah, trolls yeah. they have no fucking life. So. <laughs> yeah. Do you have anything you might say to like naysayers on your lifestyle choices? Yeah. Like, and like whether it be compassionate or fuck you or whatever, like anything? Uh, yeah. Um, People that are like honestly are gonna come on and comment, yeah. Cause it's what happens, it's the internet. And I appreciate you like, you know, it's gonna be an overflow of the positive shit. But. Yeah, well I love you and your humanness and um, uh, uh, the differences that we have and uh, you're lovable. <laughs> Hell yeah, all right, cool. All right, so I got a really weird question now, you ready? Mm -hmm. Do you listen to Joe Rogan at all or not really? Yeah, yeah. All right, so if you could pick two dead historical figures from any point in history and bring them together and alive on Joe okay. Rogan, who would they be and what would the topic be? <laughs> That's a good question. It's, it's uh, out there, huh? Yeah, that is far out. You can, you can take a second. Hmm. They have to be dead. No. Just anyone, basically anyone. Okay. You can be alive too now. Well. But you have, like, access to everyone in history as yeah. well. Uh, Terrence McKenna would probably be one. Yeah. Just because he, he just has such a way with words and um, what the topic would be. I'm but, not who, sure. but who would be the second person if you had like those two people with Joe? So you got to. Oh, okay, it. two people with Joe. Yeah, yeah. At once. Yeah, yeah, uh, and then the topic. Okay. And that's a whole other dynamic. Yeah. Shoot. Sorry, it's a mm. weird, fun question, but. Um, maybe Ram Das. Or, yeah, yeah, Ram Das. I really like the way that he combines like spirituality and psychology. Um, and, uh, you know, Terrence McKenna does a pretty good job at that as well. So maybe, uh, yeah, that would be the topic like um, psychology and spirituality. Awesome. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's a random yeah. hard question and you yeah, pulled that, that one, one out of your ass. Yeah. <laughs> I, I test people throughout just to see their metal and you seem like you could handle a hard one. So I'm like, mm kind of weird chicken I ask I always finish yeah. with a weird question cool well I love you thanks so much yeah, uh, I love you. I'm glad I got to come and like camp with you guys I'm sad you guys are leaving but dude we'll be on each other's parallel routes within like yeah. a month or two that's how this shit works yeah the rainbow road family reunion yeah mm -hmm. cool well thank you so much for sharing with everyone and uh it means a lot to me and I think a lot of people uh the same thing you know just your willingness to be so open and and again it makes you feel you know you kind of put yourself in a vulnerable spot being on internet land but uh yeah i just want you to know that uh, i'm not the only one that appreciates that that people mm -hmm. that haven't even seen this yet are going to feel a lot of appreciation too. yeah and I, I really hope that like this channel can inspire people to take that leap of faith and live the life that they want to live um and not not wait too long for the perfect circumstances um because uh yeah, it's definitely, it's worth all, everything, the, the hardship, um, it's all grace. Awesome. Uh, namaste. Mm-hmm.